your conversations and that sort of thing and, and immediately convert them into AI ML categories. But the, but the real limitation of Pandora Writer was that it took the, um, it, it took the inputs and, and transformed them literally into patterns. So if you think about a typical transcript of two people talking, um, it, consists of, it may consist of multiple sentences or fairly long sentences. And then if, if you try to use those sentences as AI ML patterns, they're just way too specific. So it's very unlikely that someone later would come along and enter that exact same pattern. Um, so the Pandora writer tended to create a lot of AI ML that could never really be activated unless, unless it was subsequent editing. Um, another, st another step we took was to create the uh, learn and eval tags for AI ML, which allows the bot to dynamically create new uh, rules and categories in its memory. And um, since these are simple AI ML tags, botmasters have created a variety of different conversational scenarios where those tags are used. So you know, typically it could be something like um, the, the client says, um, uh, what is the capital of Pennsylvania? And the bot says Philadelphia. And then the, the bot master the, the chatter says, no, that's wrong. And the bot says, well, what should I have said? And, and they say, well, you should say Harrisburg. And then suddenly the bot can create a new stimulus response category for the pattern. What is the capital of Pennsylvania and the response carries um, Another really interesting development, which came from our, our free open source software community, was reverse AI ML. It was developed by um, a guy named Charles Chevalier in Paris. And uh, amazingly, not even a native English speaker, but created this beautiful system in AI ML for creating more AI ML. And basically what it does, and it, so reverse AI ML takes factual statements like um, John loves Jane and creates a new uh, AI ML category with the pattern sentence one and the response John loves Jane, then also creates a whole bunch of AI ML with, with a variety of different questions that you could ask about that statement. So does John love Jane? Who does John love? Who loves Jane? Etc. are all generated by this um, reverse AI ML program. And then you can see that these are, like, maybe you can't see it because it's kind of dense here, but basically what happens is that each of these questions um, links to that to that sentence one response about the game. The other thing I want to talk about on that slide was the, the Spellbinder technology. So um, Spellbinder was another attempt to go back to the idea of creating um, bot content from transcripts, from, from conversations. And um, the difference between Spellbinder and the old Pandora writer is that Spellbinder is an, makes an attempt to create original generalized patterns for the inputs. And it has a couple of interesting properties. One is that if you look at transcripts of Star Trek, for example, if anywhere in those transcripts anyone asks Captain Kirk any variation of what is your name, whether they say, what is your name, who are you, identify yourself, tell me who you are, any of those things. It just takes one instance of any of those in the transcripts for the bot to learn the response to all. And that's kind of, that's, that's actually pretty cool because, you know, there may, be, there may be a very small number of places in all those transcripts where those types of questions get asked. Um, another, um, another interesting property is that a big, a big challenge in writing um, AI ML bots is coming up with sort of default responses. 
I'm sure a lot of us have run into this problem with other cloud systems too, which means that if the if the um, if the input contains a wild card, then that really means that the bot did not completely identify what the what the um, client chatting with the bot was saying. And I always think of it as like talking on a cell phone. Um, like I, I was talking on a cell phone with my friend Fritz yesterday when I was on the train, and he was talking and he said something about about uh, this meeting, and I asked him about Erwin, and then suddenly it became static. And I could hear him say, Erwin, Erwin. Rather than just say, I couldn't hear you, say it again. <laughs> Tell me what you said, I didn't understand you. I, I just sort of made something up, like I, I gave Fritz the impression that I understood he was talking about Erwin, so he could go on to the next <laughs> statement that he wanted to make. And that's sort of, that's sort of the art of, of creating chatbots right there, is coming up with default responses, which give the client kind of the indication that you understood what they said, but uh, it's, it's smarter than just saying, I don't know, or you know, I do not understand that. And it's a way of giving the illusion of intelligence to um, continue the conversation. So a big part of what Spellbinder does is to try to create those default responses from the transcripts. And I know a lot of, a lot of people have chatted with Captain Kirk and said some of the responses are random, and that's really where that comes from, is that, is that um, it's got a, a large number of these default responses, which are basically lines selected from various TV episodes that are somewhat associated with the pattern. <coughs> now, um, the, the Star Trek episodes have about 9,000 lines of dialogue for Captain Kirk. Um, about 6,000 of those are useful. When I say useful, what I mean by that is that um, 3,000 of them are just too long to, to really be, make sense for this. So we, we have a, a cutoff of so many characters for the, for the lines that are actually going to consider. With the remaining 6,000 lines of dialogue, the um, Spellbinder program is able to create a bot with about 2,000 AIML categories. Now those those two thousand get combined <coughs> with a reduction set, so the resulting bot has about um, seven thousand total categories, five thousand reduction categories, and two thousand Captain Kirk personality categories. So that's seven thousand categories. It's still a bit small compared to the figure I gave you a few minutes ago of ten thousand being our estimate of, of how many we'd like to have for a believable. Spellbinder has the property that the, the more conversation logs you have, the higher the fidelity of the result we buy. So we'd really, we'd really like to get something bigger than the Star Trek set that we started with. Another comment about that is it's certainly possible to mix and match um, AIML bot content from a variety of sources. So people could take the, um, uh, people, I say people, I mean myself, could take the um, Captain Kirk personality and put it on top of the Talisman personality. The reason I didn't do that was because I just wanted to kind of do the experiment to see what would happen if I created a completely original personality with Spellbinder. And I think that's what led to some of the comments about the randomness, because I, if, if I had combined it with the Alice personality, then the, com the comments wouldn't be that it's random, the comments would be that it sounds like Alice. So, um, um, it is possible to, to mix and match those um, that AI email content to create the bots. Um, I can't really remember the thing that's I wanted to say. I'm sure there's time for other stuff, but I'm not even monitoring my time here, so I don't know. Okay, I probably, I probably went too long. 